Infatuation. If the middle mid-range type A narcissist was honest. As I have explained, narcissists are incapable of love. And if you want to understand more about this, listen to the video, Do Narcissists Pretend to Love You? Of course, lesser and mid-range narcissists believe, and it is a genuine belief, albeit it is wrong, that they love certain people. What it actually amounts to is infatuation. This infatuation is relevant to all narcissists, but in this instance, I am going to provide you with insight if the middle-mid-range type A narcissist was honest about this infatuation towards you as the romantic victim. The middle-middle-range type A narcissist invariably presents as either an overwhelming angel, a false angel, somebody who apparently is very caring, very considerate, passive-aggressive, or is anodyne, in a way, almost a vanilla narcissist. The manipulation's there, but there's no huge fireworks. They treat you well, but then they'll stop. You won't get beaten up. Occasionally, they may snap at you. Occasionally, there will be a venomous insult flung at you with temper. But for the most part, it is the mealy mouth, pass cowardly, passive-aggressive behaviours. Middle-middle-range type A narcissists believe that they are good people, empathic people. These are the individuals who often believe that they are victims of narcissists and spend their time hanging around forums, chat rooms, commenting on YouTube videos and blogs as to their own torment at the hands of a supposed narcissist. They fail to realise that it's they that is the narcissist, and the complaints that they raise are as a consequence of their skewed perception of how they have been affected because people haven't given them what they wanted, and thus it challenged their control. But all of that are matters for another occasion. This provides you with insight to understand the infatuation if the middle-middle-range type A narcissist was honest. It is testament to the intensity of my love-bombing my seductive charade, and the illusion that I have created, that you feel that I am heaven-sent. Nobody compares to me, either before or after. My love for you is like the sun, vast, burning, and immense. So bright, and you, like most things on this planet, come to depend on it. The brilliance with which I make you mine, through the carefully constructed and elegantly orchestrated ensnaring, means you don't notice what is happening to you. All you know is that your dreams have come true. You are whisked off your feet, made to feel special and lifted up on high. And why not? You are indeed special to me. I chose you. From all those appliances out there, from the thousands upon thousands, I targeted you. I worked out how effective you would be for my needs. I dedicated myself to capturing you. That is how special you are. You are particularly special because I elevated you to the position of being my intimate partner primary source so that you are the main provider of fuel, the main person that I control, the main provider of character traits and residual benefits. What greater honour could I ever bestow on somebody? You are my lifeblood. Without the fuel that you provide to me each and every day, succulent, potent and plentiful, I wouldn't exist. No wonder I worship you when I first find you. You are the answer to my fears. The destruction of my construct is a terrifying matter to contemplate, and therefore I have to do anything to ensure that this doesn't happen. You are instrumental in achieving this. And it is through your fuel that I am not only able to exist, but function, conquer, and attract. You are so important to me that you provide the fuel that allows me to gain even more fuel. 
You are the catalyst for all my endeavours, my machinations and my schemes. You are the driving force behind everything that I do, my successes, my ambitions and my achievements. It is because of you that I am able to illuminate the world with my brilliance. Now do you understand why my seduction of you must be so absolute and intense, why I am infatuated with everything about you? You are my saviour. You are everything that I need. And accordingly, I must capture you with all due expedience, so that you aren't plucked from my grasp by some other pretender. It's through you that I am able to transcend the mediocre and the mundane. Oh, how those words make me shudder. I am not mediocre, nor am I mundane. I am not in the middle. My seduction is born out of an infatuation for you, a huge, ravenous hunger. I need you. To acquire you, I must take you closer to the heaven than you have ever been. Does it matter that I do so through the construct of an illusion, so long as it serves that purpose to ensnare you, that I am driven by my infatuation with you? You are worshipped, you are adored, and you are idealised. Who wouldn't want to be revered in such a manner, and by one so talented as I? It's a match that was forged in heaven. You give me what I need, and I give you what you desire. It makes perfect sense, and this ideal matching of you and I must always come to pass. It is written in the stars above. I pin all my hopes on you. I put every ounce of effort into acquiring you and making you mine. I must ensure that my infatuation is met with a result. I strain my sinews, polish my charm and burn brightly in the hope and expectation that you will provide me with the outstanding fuel that I require. You don't disappoint, at least not at first. Yet the time comes when the fuel may sour, but I doubt that will happen with you. You have to be my saviour. The others, their fuel soured, became stale. But we have an immortal union. We are in touching distance of that. I have you at the gates of heaven, and all you need to do is keep supplying me with wonderful fuel, submit to my control, and ensure that your character traits and residual benefits are freely provided to me. There were others, of course, that I looked at, but you promised the most, and that is why I have promised so much in return. I want you, and I need to make you mine, to own you, to draw you in. I will cater to your every need. I will look after you. I will protect you. I will make you smile. I will make you happier than anything else that has gone before. I will love you with every ounce of my being. Although that isn't actual genuine love, it doesn't really matter. So long as I make you happy, that I make you love me, that I make you give me the fuel that I need. It doesn't matter that my infatuation causes me to lie to you by pretending that I love you. It does not matter that my infatuation causes me to lie to you about how wonderful I think that you are. How intelligent, interesting, kind, sporty, beautiful, attractive, whatever it may be. I will say it because my infatuation causes me to do it because I am so caught up in you. I will steal and purloin the lines from literature, the lyrics from songs, the moments from movies, and use them as if they were my own, taking them and utilizing them for the purposes of capturing you, driven by my infatuation. I cannot see that you will fail me. I cannot see that you will let me down. How could you? Why would you? Why would you want to commit such a treacherous act to one such as I, one that will give you the world, one that will always aid you and help you and be there for you, because that will ensure that you will do the same and more for me. My infatuation means I'm only in this for me, but you will benefit too, because you will be given this extraordinary period where everything is absolutely amazing and wonderful, better than anything that you've ever experienced before. I want to give you the world. I want to take you to heaven. 
I want to take you the closest to it that you have ever been. And this is what I will do for you. I promise. <laughs>